Welcome to Highlights Action from the first semi-final of the World Cup of Pool in Leicester between the Netherlands and the Philippines. Will the Dutch make it to their third final or will the Philippines reach their fifth? The Netherlands got off to the perfect possible start with a break and run out in the first rack to gain an early advantage against the Philippines. We join the action in the second with the Philippines to break. Commentary from Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones. Yeah, and a really nice starter on the one that uh, offers natural position for the two. He's, they just got to carry the cue ball to the left side of the eight. The good thing is uh, the position on the two, you, you might have a little angle, but the three's real handy, and we can see an early winner possibly with the four nine. Absolutely right, Jeremy. The Dutch here will be salivating. This could be a rapido conclusion. To rack two. And Niels knowing the three is very handy. So he put a little bit more punch on that ball. I, I may have applied it with just left spin to get a little closer to the two. But really relying on his partner who's been super solid all week. Well, and uh, he got snookered kind of from nowhere. I think he actually hit it a little cleaner than he thought he would. I think he thought he would slide in between the six and five. He would have seen a lot more cue power if he was trying to draw above the, the three ball. Has he got a curve shot here? Just a subtle, subtle bit of right spin. Not subtle enough. Yeah, and just attacked with a little bit too much speed there. Didn't allow the cue ball to curve, really, and allow the right spin to throw the three ball in. And, man, a big reprieve for Team Philippines after opening dry break. Now he's got he's got to maneuver the cue ball. Can he shove it in? And I don't think so. He's got to maneuver around. Oh, he, he's drawn it. Well... Okay, pretty fortunate rub on the five. Things could have turned out much different. Money in the bank. 4-9 combination. It's 1-1, one, one, but the Philippines... It's a crunching break, it really is. The one ball went into the top corner. The two's open, so to the three. Again, the Dutch have first opportunity. And yeah, they have a nice starter on the two. It's a little thin. So a little bit of a choice here. Usually you can put a lot of maximum left side spin and catch the two a little heavier and float down for the three to kind of hold the cue ball. Um, some concern here, especially being elevated. So you may see him attack and try and draw into the three. It's not a bad play. If you're really concerned about that scratch in the upper corner. So this is going to be a delicate little flick in the side. Okay, and he played it the other way. He decided to use the entire side pocket on the two, overcutting the two to guarantee the cue ball getting to the side rail safely. And a pretty nice shot here by Biesterbosch. Uh, it was a, that's a very nervy shot in a high pressure situation.
that though no one could foresee okay it wasn't the easiest pot you've ever seen in your life but for fine that should be meat and potatoes yeah quite honestly that's a 90 plus over 100 the uh, players of this caliber to world class make that one a little bit of a stretch and a little concern with the cue ball may have had a little something to do with that miss but still one that Niels would like to have back delicate situation here though I think he can see the entire three is he is he trying to chip this ball and run the cue ball oh wow really nice hit uh, it may not come with any reward but from that wow great shot Carlo Biardo, the steadier and the more successful of the two Filipinos. He's got a, a wise head on those shoulders. And many consider Carlo, you know, in tournament play, it's, it's difficult. It's shorter races sometimes, and uh, some luck and fortune plays yeah, into our game. But many consider Carlo, if they played extended races, probably one of the top three or four in the world. Watch out for the cue ball off the table. Well, the cue ball stays on the table. Unfortunately for the Dutch, so does the three ball. And you're going to see Jeffrey let, let his stroke out a little bit here. He's going to go up and down the table. A bit thin to try and cut it in and I think hold for the four. We've seen him make some really nice soft ones, though, but I, I really think he's going to go up and down two rails, try and kind of get where the three's at now with the cue ball. Oh, he played it soft. That was very surprising to me. I thought he would try to stay clear of the five and go up and down the table with a little more speed and a little more side spin. So a positional error here in game three. Yes, the eight ball completely blocking Piano's path to the four, hence the jump. A really scrappy, ragged rack. They all count the same, though, Jeremy. Yeah, they sure do. Somewhat like golf, we. We have a lot of a lot of games that look like birdies and eagles, and then we have a few uh, bogeys and doubles that come in every now and again. Big shot for Niels here, though, after that miss on the three. Yeah. Oh wow, a fluke. Is it going to get any reward? The wages of sin. That was a terrible miss. Didn't deserve this. Now that really stings the Filipinos. Not just the fact the ball went in, but the fact there's position there as well. And it appears he's playing this in the side. And again, he can go one rail or two. I like the two like that. Somewhat of the same kind of shot I, I really felt Jeffrey should have played earlier. And for team Holland and Niels Fayne, a few easy ones he's got oh man barely squeaked that one in so Niels has got to regroup it's early in this match so sometimes this can lead on to worse things but most likely for for Niels and team Holland he'll settle in and he certainly got lady luck in his corner that was a massive fluke Early doors, and we've already seen a double Dutch success. Winning the first rack cleanly, the third rack fortuitously. Holland two, the Philippines one.
Welcome back to the first semi-final in the World Cup of Pool, where the Netherlands hold a 2-1 lead over the Philippines in this race to nine. Commentary comes from Jeremy Jones and first, Bill Yates. It's still very early on. Plenty of time for the Filipinos to psychologically and numerically recover. But those kind of flukes leave a bit of taste. And Phil's kind of how you look at it. Sometimes you feel like it's not your day, but it's early and Philippines have trailed. Um, I think they would three ball going to get in. Yes, and for a nice starter on the one. A little tight position on the two down table with the nine and six. But sometimes whenever, you know, if your opponent's just running out playing perfect, that's much more bothersome in my opinion than a fluke, especially early in the match. Well, that's perfect timing, I believe, uh, on that stroke and really got him as ideal as he could get him. And, uh, and, you know, if you look at a team maybe like Austria, who's played so incredibly sound, when they fluke a ball in on you now, that, that, could, that could bother you because you figure them to play really like top-level pool like they've been playing, and then also uh, uh, you can't afford a little luck playing them, you wouldn't think. A big shot here on a four ball. Position should be okay. It's just a little natural cueing with low right English. Plenty of angle. Squeeze it in. Good tempo on the stroke, though, which opens the pocket a bit. We can't overstate just what a, a footprint pool has in the Philippines. It's a massive sport there. And these two, if they were to go back as World Cup champions, would be national heroes. Oh, absolutely, with Efren Reyes and Bustamani winning the first two titles for the Philippines. Anytime you follow them up with a similar, similar championship and now the same championship, Oh well, yeah, these guys will be praised back home. Well, that's nice control coming short of the side pocket in between the seven and the side. So a very comfortable Carlo Beato, it seems like to here to open our semifinal. I always think with these two, it's like a, a comedic duo. You've got the, the straight man and the, the guy who's creating the laughs. Beato, all business, efficient, dependable. De Luna, charismatic, entertaining. Oh, a nice little drag stroke there on the eight. And a chip in nine to tire a match of two games apiece. Yeah, break and run out. And just like that, we are on level terms. Beach de Bosch with the responsibility of breaking off in rack five. Well, again, the one in that corner does the Dutch a favor. Not just the one, the six and the seven have disappeared as well. Shape on the two, happy days. Yeah, in the first five games here, we're getting some nice starting opening shots for these teams, so that should get the arm loose. Now, he sh I don't think he'll mess around with trying to get close to this three. Yeah, that's a nice shot and a big shot again after uh, a couple a couple of uh, poor strokes by Niels in a few earlier games. Always well prepared and dedicated Mark Abish de Bosch. He's got a table at home on which he puts many practice hours. Well, 
Well, I'd mentioned that Petri McConan and Alex Kazakis are two of the most improved players in the world the last few years, in my opinion. But you can see guys like Mark uh, along the same route in many Euros, actually, after going to the Euro Tour last, last year. Actually, in Holland also, in Eindhoven, um, eyes were really opened up to the Euro scene. He feels it to be a real honour to represent his country, especially alongside Neil Sfyan, a player he's really looked up to over the years. Having said that, though, I don't think he feels out of place in Fyan's company. He's just desperate to be a, a really good supporting act, and I think he's doing a little more than that at the moment. Good number twos in this tournament. They are gold dust. Well, again, Neil's not with the best timing on the draw stroke there, and he's left his partner a tester. Well, if that doesn't settle any early nerves, nothing will. It was, as Jeremy rightly said, a poor positional shot from Fyan. But the nine ball went straight into the heart of the pocket from Biche de Bosch. The Filipino players are known for doing things that just other players don't. Uh, especially in the bigger moments. We all fool around with shots practicing and maybe when you're ahead in a what what might be an easy match. Uh, but even in the biggest stages, they pull off some incredible shots. Now, it appears the three passes the six. It's tight. Uh, but one of our more testy shots to open the racks. He can run the cue ball for the three in the side. There's nothing wrong with that. If he wants to put a little more steam on this. Oh, that was just like perfect cueing there. So they're going to have to set up somewhere around the center of the table for a little bit of a thin cut shot on the four. But shouldn't be a problem with the five over the side. It's all about just maintaining. Well, that's got to slow down a bit. It's actually got right to the perfect spot. Something you may not threaten that much. You, you don't want to take a chance of getting snookered. So you usually end up a little more short on that cut shot, but perfect position. I think these two really complement each other. Totally different styles, attitudes, approaches, cue actions, you name it. And yet together, they mesh. Well, like, like countrymen from all around the world, you know, the Philippines hang out a lot together at the tournaments. They compete a lot together back home. So there's a... Definitely a friendship there, but also just the respect. I think the respect of both each player. Uh, they understand things don't always work out perfectly, but 100% of effort is uh, definitely in play at all times with the Filipino players. Now, it looked like he was queuing up to really put some speed on this with a lot of draw. Extension, please. Like a low right English. I believe he's going to really put some power into this one. Oh, no, he decided to change. He went with the top English. Mr. Seven Ball like this in an earlier round. Playing with check side. Excellent. Excellent shot. And that's that tempo there, Phil. If you get a little jumpy on that one, a bit of a flatter cue ball, and it doesn't roll out. So just perfect timing there by Carlo Biata and Jeffrey DeLuna. Another 
Nice shot on the eight for a throw in. We fully expected a toe to toe battle, and that's precisely what's transpiring. The Philippines three, Holland three. Oof. A close run thing in so many different ways. Yeah, we may see the Philippines go after the nine right here on a little clip shot on the one. I'll tell you what, they may they may end up making the six as well uh, on accident. This one may bank off the rail and chip the six in the corner. So it, it's a little bit of a question mark here. It's a judgment call, you might say. This could turn out poorly for him, but be hard for me to pass up cue ball on the nine. Here we go. No, no contact. No one in, no six in. Well, in a fair way, I, I think they would have rather not made the six just because the one was in the cue ball. We're going to be separated. Um, but a pretty fair effort there by Carlo. Hard shot to judge from so much distance on this slick table. So you're going to see. Attention, please. You're going to see Biesterbosch kick at this kick at this one ball. I think he's going to have to use a little side spin to get at it. This is one you'll lose a little accuracy hitting it harder, but you can't afford to slow roll it. Uh oh, watch out for the four. Okay, now we're going to see another attacking shot on the nine, I'm sure. It's a problem, though. You probably have a better chance of making it shooting a three ball combo. There's an element of safety trying to play a, a trying to play a carom shot. Okay, he decided just to play safe, and I think that's a real smart play. Because if he goes at the carom and he banks the one down table and doesn't make the nine, well, they're going to leave a return one nine bank combination, Phil. To me, that shot made sense. It was playing the percentages. So again, we'll see Holland kick with some speed here. He'll want to ricochet off the bottom of the one, sending the cue ball at the four. Oh, and he missed it all. Foul. So we're no going to get most certainly see our first lead by Team Philippines. Start the clock, please. One, four, nine. That was never going to be missed in a month of Sundays. Welcome back to the first semi-final of the 2019 World Cup of Pool, where the Philippines have taken the lead for the first time, 4-3, in this race to reach nine racks. The Philippines were unable to extend their lead after a dry break, and the Dutch managed to capitalise to get back on level terms at 4-4. But the Netherlands were not level for long. A foul break by Beisterbosch led to the Filipino team clearing the table to go back ahead 5-4. The woes on the break continued with the Philippines starting with a dry break again and the Dutch team made short work of wrapping up the 10th rack to level again at five apiece. The Netherlands then reclaimed the lead for the first time since 3-2 with a break and run out in the 11th to put them within three of victory and a place in the final. We return to the action in rack 12 with De Luna to break for the Philippines as we rejoin Jeremy Jones. Well, strategic change there on the break. We talked about uh, them hitting them a little lighter. 
he went with a head on break and as hard as he could hit him pretty much uh, which is pretty hard for Jeffrey DeLuna and nothing nothing Phil he put his whole being into that he reminded me on that shot of the old Mexican player Ismael Paez the runner up in the world championship many years ago the Mexican jumping bean that's right a great player from Mexico long time lives in LA now the one ball he'll play the two up long just go back and forth with the cue ball don't do too much now that needs to go and you could see it was a little bit of a thick strike to the hole which just a little bit off with the one ball to the hole really slows the cue ball down. And now I believe he's he's got to play safe, which is uh, you got to stomach it sometimes in a position you should be going offensive. But Neil's a very efficient player. And that's OK, kind of taking the simple safety, which I'm a big fan of in, in, in these short, high pressure situations. Um, the Philippines after what should have been a clear table very going to be very inspired on this jump shot that being Carlo Beato. Extension please. Well, there is some form of gap between the two balls that could be masking the two. The four and the five there. But is it of any use to the Dutch? Well, I think so. If he can get any piece of this at all, he doesn't have to be able to make it. But there's a lot of balls to play safe behind. He could overcut the two and kind of bank it back up towards the three, running the cue ball back behind the seven, eight. Well, I believe he's got some type of piece. We'll we'll try and figure out the way he cues the ball. And this could be that shot I was talking about. Kind of bank the two off the top rail back up towards the three and run the cue ball behind the seven eight. Oh, he could he went for the pot. Very convinced he could make it. If he if he didn't have enough room he wouldn't have shot at it. Well, he missed the four by not way for thin margin, so I think he definitely could have potted it. We can't be critical of uh, Bosch to Bosch, though. <laughs> not at all. And the Philippines talked a little bit, but then with no extension, went offensive on a nice cross side bank. By Jeffrey De Luna. Big shot here by Carlo. He's got to elevate. He's got to pinch the cue ball back a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, if this is a template for the rest of the day, we're in for a treat. Jumping around a little, isn't he, DeLuna? The pressure is definitely in the arm. Definitely between the ears as well. Becoming more and more animated. That cue ball is going to be on the wrong side of the seven. Shouldn't be a problem, but it's kind of got right in between to where the drawn to the side rail kind of involves the side pocket. So I look for him to go forward with the cue ball here. Oh, he is going to draw it. So maybe he can just pinch it back and hold for a little cut shot on the eight. Well, he went ahead and went to the side. So nice control. 
you would rather shoot it like that if you feel confident that uh, you're not going to involve that side pocket. Much, much better way when you're close to the ball than having to follow it to the end rail and back up. So again, uh, just a chip in on the nine to get another tie score in our first semifinal. It does not get closer than this, not just in terms of the scoreboard, but also in the way all four players are playing. You join us in the closing stages of this first semi-final with the Netherlands and the Philippines locked at six apiece in this race to nine. Commentary comes from Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones. It looks like he can just follow forward perfectly for the two. Yes, what a sweet starter at a 6-6 six, six, uh, situation. Now, how did this fall? If this fell straight in, they're going to have to make a little bit more of a shot on the three than they had originally thought. Maybe just stop right there, play the three in the side where Niels can roll forward for the four. I wouldn't try to do extra here if I'm Mark. Just got to rely on your partner. Yeah. It's not the worst of things, but with the eight ball there, you don't want to be move, having to move the cue ball up table into that nine and seven traffic and then back down for the four. So maybe Neil should have grabbed the hold of the reins there and just, just told Mark, just stop your ball, and I have the three in the side. I can roll forward easily for the four. So now a difficult situation. Extension, please. A situation made for an extension. 30 second shot clock, but each team allowed one 30 second extension per rack, and this is definitely the time to take it. And that's how out of position uh, he was on the three. Not that he couldn't make it, but, but really guaranteeing some position on the on the four was key. He didn't want to shoot it and run the cue ball into like maybe the nine or seven and have his partner covered up on the four. Ooh, I don't like that route with the four ball being there. He's got to draw that. Um, I believe he's got to draw this a little bit. Man, that's a that's a tight, tight little angle going by that four ball, especially on this slick table. So if he cues this with a high ball, Real hard to get underneath this ball two rails. He'll probably end up hitting like uh, off the second rail about half the ball, cue ball coming up into the four and the eight. Uh, he hit it great. He hit it great. For me, the shot of the match so far, turning a, a negative into a positive. And that's the problem with Holland getting out of line on a, what looked like a simple situation and, and offering the Filipinos back to the table. Well, that's a bit of touche there, but and a little bit of bad luck after a great kick in in the side. No position on the pink four. Luna walked past, he looked to see whether this was going to be of any benefit to them. Remained impassive, but I think... I think he'll be relieved. Yeah, he's definitely got a shot, but it's thin, and the five's pinned on the side rail. So is he going to go three rails near the seven, or is he going to try and kill the cue ball? It looks like he's going three rails. Watch out for the seven now. Okay. And that was a little bit more of forced. And man, what a horrible flick, uh, meaning getting him really straight in on the five. So we're going to need some cue power here to get position on the seven. And 
watch this cue ball take off after this strike. It should really have a lot of zip coming back by the eight and then back down table for the seven. And that's the epitome of timing there. Looked like he hardly f hit the cue ball at all and just maximum revolutions on the bottom half of the ball. That one squirmed its way in. His heart must have been in his mouth, DeLuna. No mistake, though, on the eight ball from Mr. Dependable, Carlo Biardo, the star of this match for me thus far, together with Mark Bisterbosch. The lead, the advantage, the momentum continues to swap hands. Right now, the Filipinos in the ascendancy, they lead 7-6. Yeah, and a big break off here. We'll see if he changes. He hit him kind of light before and had two dry breaks. So we'll see if uh, a little different plan here. Oh, he hit him pretty light again. He's made the one in the opposite corner. Not going to get a shot on the two, though. And a difficult rollout situation like it always is at this caliber. I think he's got a roll out somewhere. Hmm, let me think here. Yeah, I like him kind of rolling out in this area where he's pointing the cue. Doesn't really offer a bank, but probably something like banking the two over by the three and run the cue ball back up table for some type of distance as far as the safety. We'll see what the Filipinos have in mind. Netherlands, your option? Well, he's not happy with that. He would have much rather rolled out with a little more distance. And the Dutch discussing it. It's hard to really tell. They'd like to bank it back across in between the three seven. And we'll definitely know what the Filipinos had in mind here shortly. Often when they push out, they've got some dastardly plan that no one's worked out and they executed to perfection. Not on this occasion. No, and that's gonna that's gonna leave the Dutch a pretty prime opportunity, probably to chip the two ball towards the eight, bring the cue ball back. Around over where the cue was just pointed. Maybe send the two to the back rail, but the problem with that is if you do that and you don't get the snooker, you may leave some type of play on the nine. So very careful shot here. Oh, and that's over hit by a mile. So distance wasn't uh, his plan there. He was trying to get the solid snooker on the seven, and the problem with that is when you over hit, you leave an easy one. Funnily enough, I was talking to Mark this morning on the way in, and he was saying they have had some big bounces off the short rail. I don't know whether that was the reason, but it was a gross misjudgment, and it could be a very expensive one. Yeah, and that had a lot to do with trying to get the cue ball nestled up on that seven. And after looking at the shot, I agree with his play. I think he should have been able to execute that, and I, I think... Uh, it was it was a, fi a, a fine decision, but just a little bit of a miss hit. But Mr. Biardo comes up trumps again, not just potting the two, but trapping the cue ball in this segment of the table for the three. And 
And for Team Philippines, it just seems like coming towards the end of the match, crunch time, they're getting the opportunity and they're taking full advantage. Still a bit more left in this rack, that's for sure, but this is to get on the hill. He's got to use a little bit of right side spin here to hit the five a little heavier, holding the ball for the six. And who else would you rather have shooting this big shot on the six to get on the seven, which will really end this rack and get the Filipinos in need of one game to get to our Bet Victor World Cup final. Yeah, he could move the cue ball a bit more around the table for a little better angle here on the eight, but they can handle even straight in and having to play short side on the nine. That's okay as well. Now he's going to have a little stretch. I'm not sure he can reach this one. Still, though, Carlo, very efficient with the bridge. I don't see this being a problem. Just a bit of a punch shot coming across for the nine. It's the first two-rack lead in the match. And boy, it's going to be timely. Uh, difficult out here, from just from the one to the two is super tough. Uh, doesn't he really have to play it with the seven eight tied up right there? He could play the safety here and draw into the seven or eight and, and knock the cue ball around. Or excuse me, knock the one ball around. I would really consider that. Only reason being is there's not a lot of angle on this one ball. And to go at it with top inside English trying to come three rails around for the two, I would consider the safety myself. Yeah, I like that option. You may get a one nine combination to win the match. Yeah, difficult. One thing close observers of Jeffrey DeLuna will tell you when he gets to a World Cup and he's in a, a partnership and the pressure's on, he becomes a different player, a lot more circumspect, a lot more sensible. Well, I kind of believe... Attention, please along with a nice finish at the U.S. Open that Jeffrey's maturing as a player. So it sometimes takes, when you have so much talent, it sometimes takes a little bit longer to, to refine the game. And refine Jeffrey's, you can see, man, just can't wait to get out of his chair. So you can see that the problem in hand, huge hit here for Holland to survive in this tournament. And no hit at all is Foul. doomsday. And deservedly, Carlo Beato, former World Nine Ball champion, gets a chance to get his team into the final with what looks like a fairly routine one nine combination. into the final. So the Philippines make it to the World Cup of Pool final for the first time since 2013. Join us next time to find out if Austria or Spain can make it through to join them.